Good evening and Happy New Year. I'm Stacey Amos and here's some of the top stories we have for you tonight. The Festival Village is officially open. Is it 1,000 going home or could the number be higher? We'll explain. These stories and more are coming up for you next on News Channel 8. <laughs> Top story tonight, the Crucian Festival Village officially opened last night in Freedom City, Fredericksted. Let's take a look at all the festivities. Yay! Hey, the village is now officially open. I want to thank everybody for coming out. It is a pleasure to see the support. Um, everyone is supporting festival. Uh, last year, you know, we had the challenges of our floods and heavy rain. It indeed was a challenge and we did overcome that again this year you know financial problems again worldwide give us a next challenge that we have to overcome and we have to do with what we have so again we have to make sure that we give the people of the Virgin Islands especially St. Croix a good festival so once more um, we did it again we're here it's happening I'm pleased to see that um, we have a beautiful lineup for y'all this year like Melody said, 11 days. Uh, with those 11 days, we make sure you're gonna have a tremendous and a great festival. And again, just make sure that you do it safe. Don't drink and drive, and if you do, have a designated driver. Again, you know the police department is in full force. They are here, they're in the back. Again, they're not here as enemies, but as friends to make sure that we do conduct ourselves the way we're supposed to. Um, the guns, the violence, you keep it out of festival. Don't bring it in here. If you do, then they become unfriendly. The police, again, will not be your friend in a time like that. So make sure y'all do come in, enjoy yourself. It is a family-oriented place. We try to keep it that way. We want everybody to enjoy themselves and go home safely. I am Deidre Dubois, your reigning Miss St. Croix 2011-2012. I would first like to recognize Honorable Ronald Russell, the Honorable Donna Christensen, and the Honorable Gregory Francis. I would like to let the Christian community know that we should try to keep it safe this year. No violence. Whatever problem you have with anyone, keep it outside of the village, outside of Frederickstead. Let's try to keep it fun, violence-free, and don't forget to celebrate the Christian carnival flavor. I know when I come from here, I'm going to get me a kung pati because I forever can't find one only around this time. And just basically, everybody, enjoy yourself. We have rides, we have food, we have lots of local drink, entertainment. And let's just do what we came here to do. Enjoy ourselves. These remarks would be brief. But I do want to say that it's a pleasure to be here. The 29th legislature supports festival. And we passed the budget to allow for this activity to be taking place. And we do it for carnival. But most of all, as the Crucian Christmas Festival kicks off, let's think about how we could enjoy each other with the right attitude. Attitude makes a big difference. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, excuse me, thank you. Let's have a Crucian Christmas spirit of kindness. And let's share that kindness despite some of the challenges we have. We have a kind heart, we share, and we enjoy. I want to thank everybody for coming out. I enjoy the food, especially, but the rides, I came from the beach today, the horse races were great. The Calypso tent, all of the activities, let's show support for our festival. Although we're going through these trying times, together as a community, we're going to pull through this time. This time. Because by working together, we'll consider this a temporary measure, but it's up to the community to get together and make it a difference. But I want to say to the individuals in the village tonight and those beyond, we need to show the world that this is our culture. It happens once a year in St. Croix. It happens in St. Thomas once a year in St. John. But it is up to us 
whether we're going to give some positive media, positive vibes to the world and to the community and our children that we are loving and caring people. Queen Dubois said, we don't need no violence. We need love. You look at the children here from the Rising Stars, whatever we do as adults, especially it's in, a, it's in a negative way, we are telling our children it's okay to be that way. But I'm asking all of us, let's portray a positive image. Let's be honest. Like the Senate President said, let's go back to the basic mannerism. Good evening. Thank you. May I? We're going to have juve, we're going to have dancing in the village. You know you're going to be bumping on each other. But do not take it personal. It's about having fun. Just turn to the person and say, excuse me, I'm sorry, or join me, and let's jump up. Because this is the way we are as a community. We are loving and caring. We would like to present this plaque to you, Miss Rena Brown. It says, Village Honoree for the Crucian Christmas Festival 2011-2012. This is a beautiful mahogany plaque that was recently made by St. Croix Leap, Mr. Vincent up there who does a lot of our plaques for festival. And um, I want you to hang it in your home with pride. Thank you. We, um, we have also um, awarded Ms. Brown round trip ticket 4-2 to um, St. Thomas. Good evening. To everybody, <laughs> I am glad I'm the honoree tonight and thank the Christmas Village Committee, the President, the Lieutenant Governor and his wife, the Lieutenant Governor and his wife, the Senate President, Mr. Charlemagne, he is the best. <laughs> and thank everyone, my village family. Every one of you is my family in the village. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> we want to thank Earl Morris for that report. And when we come back, we'll take a look at the week in review. Earlier this week, Governor John DeYoung announced that nearly 1,000 government employees will lose their jobs soon. Well, now we understand that that number could reach into the 2000s. Let's take a look at how it all developed earlier this week. What the senators decided last Friday, when they took the positions that they took, and when they voted as they did, was quite simple and understood by them and by all who listened to the proceedings. What they did was decide that the dismissal of government workers was the best solution. To that end, I have taken the following actions. On Tuesday, I directed, the, I directed Kenneth Herman, the Director of Personnel, to complete the preparation of the list of those employees of the government whose tasks and functions have been deemed by the heads of the departments and agencies where they serve as not being essential. Today, OMB Director Deborah Gottlieb will be issuing letters to executive branch departments and agencies noting the amount of reductions required. These agencies will also include the Waste Management Authority, the University of the Virgin Islands, Housing Finance Authority, the Economic Development Authority, Boards of Education, the Board of Elections, WTJX Television, Schneider Regional Medical Center, and the Governor Juan F. Louis Hospital. On December 30th, letters will be delivered to 143 temporary, per diem, and part-time employees who will be informed of their dismissal with the 30th, their last day of work. But they will be placed on administrative leave so they can be paid for two weeks. On January 5th, an additional 350 employee dismissal letters will be sent out informing their employer, those employees of their termination. I have been very clear that this is not the course of action that I wish to pursue, and my actions over the years have reflected this. But I've also been just as clear that the lack of action by the 29th legislature requires these steps. 
We have no other choice given to us at this point. And all should understand that these are but the initial steps. Further actions, including an additional deployed dismissals, will be required and the combined impact will be dramatic. If in fact we have to reduce the workforce, it has to be so, it has to be done in a comprehensive way. You can't just uh, create lists just from anywhere. We need to start with the, the, the exempt and unclassified. We need to look at unnecessary contractual services. We need to look at some of those part-time, per diem, et cetera. And then lastly, if it is absolutely necessary, then you start talking in to bargaining unit uh, employees. But you can't just up and cut. You know what's happening now? And perhaps maybe uh, what we're seeing here is a prelude. The government probably lost the case with the 8% cut. And, and so all of this, is, is, is measures now he's going to put in place. One thing the government ought to do, you had the right to do it from the very beginning, is collect your property taxes. We're talking about $100 million. And I want to point out, because nobody's going to speak for those legislative employees, but I will. The governor made it clear, and you heard me say this prior to the governor saying this, at our last session prior to the special session, the legislature budget was not cut. However, the legislature cut the legislative employee's salary by 8%. They kept that money in their budget. I, like the governor, want to know what happened to that money because we're understanding that the majority might have distributed some of those savings amongst themselves as majority members, and that is unfair to the working people in the legislature. Let me just correct some things for the record. When the 8% was implemented on the legislature, the legislature had to use that 8% like every other branch of government to avoid terminations. We did not terminate anybody from the legislature. And we had to pay expenses just like every other branch of government that had increased. The LIAC, the cost of doing business in the territory increased. We did not increase our budget. So we were in a deficit situation. So that anybody that think that the 8% that the legislature kept was used for any other reason than doing operating expenses, paying vendors. We had overruns in St. John. The St. John office has not opened yet because we couldn't pay the vendors. We had vendors that were owed. So what we had to do with the 8% that was implemented in July and that we kept as a legislature was to pay our debts, to pay debts to keep people employed so that nobody now is unaffected by this next wave of economic downturn and the fact that we ain't collecting revenue. The locals might be suffering because of our financial situation, but St. Croix is still the prime choice when it comes to vacation. Earlier this week, we saw the arrival of Vice President Joe Biden and other celebrities as well. Here's Wes. Vice President of the United States, Joe Biden, is right there in one of the Air Force planes. We believe that's Air Force Two. News Channel 8, don't ask me how we got here. Um, he is in an undisclosed location for the holidays. Secret Service um, all around us, VIPD's top echelons, by team out director Elton Lewis here as well, VI Port Authority top echelons here, K9 has looked at every vehicle in this parking lot, uh, Channel 8, of course, bringing it to you live as it happens. You know, Joe Biden usually goes to St. Thomas, but this year he chose St. Croix. Probably going to relax, do a little golf, maybe some last-minute Christmas shopping, and who knows, he might even spend New Year's Eve here. There he is right there, as you can see him and his lovely wife right there as they're getting in. Days like this, I wish I was taller. <laughs> and we can see them. Uh, they're going to be getting into one of the choice limousines right there. But if you see the Vice President Joe Biden around St. Croix scuba diving or snorkeling, definitely going to be playing some golf from those golf bags. Um, then say hi. This is actually my first time here, and it will not be my last time. I'm enjoying the sun, the water, the people, the food. Everything has been excellent. Jack Spaniels around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, um, you know, it's just everything that uh, my friends have told me about. You know, uh, uh, my uh, friend Trevor Julian and his yeah. brother Irv Julian. Um, oh, we had a really good friend that I met down, while I've been down here, Rob Rios. He's been taking excellent care of me. And, um, you know, we're just enjoying it. We're going to have bring in the new year at uh, Club Reminisce, yeah. the restaurant Reminisce, and Midnight Magic. And all the celebrities and the beautiful people will be here. So, you know, need to come on out and check it out. We got the food, the buffet, and all these things happening. So it's going to be a good time.
Very good. And and the, it's it's going to be really good, like I said. And we have the fusion bands and Moko Jumbies, Cultural and Festival Dancers, my yeah. girl CJ, yeah. the sexy DJ. And y'all been making uh, Oh, yeah, the we met CJ today. Yeah. That was nice. She's um she's going to be bringing in the music and stuff, man, yeah. bringing in that island vibe. So what will be your function then? My function would be drinking and be mad with the beautiful people. <laughs> I might get behind the DJ booth if I'm allowed. Maybe grab a camera if you let me or interview somebody or something. Thanks, Wes. We have more festival footage when we return. And now we return to the Festival Village for more festival highlights. <laughs>
tak 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 tak